Hi everyone. So today I've got an exciting video because it's a collab with Alana from Skin Chronicity. Hi. And we are going to do a 10 looks one palette using the Viseart Brights palette because we both have this palette and we both love it. Love it so much. I swear I get tagged at least once a week on Instagram with people telling me that they've bought this palette. It is like the curse of the ring. I'm just trying to pass it on to as many people yep. as possible. Otherwise you will die. You will <laughs> die. Don't, you won't die. Just, you know. That's you know see what my palette looks like? <laughs> It looks like this. Oh, it's wow. terrible. This is like because I depotted it. Yeah, and it well, looks the terrible. Yeah, it's never the most exciting anyway. Yeah. Actually, I'm really glad that you suggested doing this because it's made me fall in love with this palette again because I haven't used it, literally, I hadn't used it in ages. And I am just reminded about how good quality it is. Mm. It's so good. It's like really the only colorful palette that you really need. If yeah. you like blues, these are the best blues. If you like you know, pinks and purples, they're so good. Yeah, and I think someone that's looking at this palette um, on the face of it might not realize how mm. versatile the colors yeah. are because it does look very primary and bold. Yeah. But one of the greatest strengths of that of the palette is that you can mix all of the colors together right. really effortlessly, yeah. even on the brush. You don't have to blend exactly. them together on the exactly. eye. Exactly, and I saw that you did that a lot with your looks. I was like, oh, so that's what you use the white for because I hardly ever touch white. Yeah, right. And um, I think there are a lot of hidden colors in this palette Definitely. where you mix them and they change into something different. Or there's actually one look that I did where I sheared it out so much mm. that this pink can really like be toned down so much that it's very yeah, to the softest wearable. baby pink. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so the very colors true. are very vibrant, but yeah. I think the point, and I think this is a lot to do with Viseart's philosophy as a brand, yeah. is yeah. that it's a pro brand, and yeah. the intention is not to give you the tools. You know, often you'll see palettes that have got pre-arranged quads yeah. that you can use. That's not the point here. The point here is to give you an unlimited. Um, variety of true toned colors yeah. that you can use to mix and blend to create whatever color yeah. you want and I think um, you know my first the first couple times I played with this palette I was like I'm just gonna use all of the shades exactly as they are and then I was like hang on this is actually a really beautiful pastel palette and yeah. this is a really beautiful you know, um, you can turn this into like yeah. a watercolor palette yeah. really easily. Yeah. And you know, I think I'm gonna run out of the white first because <laughs> I use it so much. You can have my white after. Yeah. <laughs> we both have very different makeup styles mm. and different ways of applying makeup because we've both got different eye shapes. So I think um, this was a really interesting challenge. Mm. And we both created very, very polar opposite looks, which I think is cool. Yeah, and in all the colors of the rainbow. Exactly. Absolutely. And I, I love your 10 looks one palette series mm. on YouTube. It's my favorite way of seeing like a review of a palette, just exactly. seeing what you can create with it. That's the most important thing to me. So I'm so happy to be a part yeah, of it and maybe you. help give some inspiration to yeah. some people who I definitely had a lot of fun with this challenge. And yeah. I think you guys are really gonna love the looks we came up with. So if you wanna see the looks that we've created, then just keep watching. We've got your looks first yeah and then mine and then yours well i wanted to do kind of an interesting sandwich so yeah. i wanted to give the best of the looks what well, yeah. i thought in terms of what was most interesting first and i really love this sunset one this one is yeah. inspired by a look that lena from faceonomics did it was one of the first looks she did with the brights palette and it looked like a sunset was just reflecting directly onto her face. It really looks like that. Oh, yeah. it was just fantastic. It's probably um, one of my favorite ones. So I wanted to start off this look with a kind of wash of color base because I think powders blend really well on top of powders. I used um, a blush brush actually to lay down a base yeah. of yellow all across the top of my face. Plus it makes application what much quicker. <laughs> yeah, it's so much quicker if you, yeah, bigger brushes, more surface area. So here you can kind of see um, just how small my eyes actually are. I think a lot of people who go onto my Instagram account might not realize yeah. um, quite yeah. what canvas I'm working with a lot of the time because a lot of the techniques that I employ are very um, enlarging. So I just wanted to add definition back here. But yeah, then I went in with a smaller brush to enhance the illusion that this was a sunset kind of hitting yeah. my face. I didn't want to just limit this to my eyes, which is why I put the color yeah. of the bridge of my nose. And it's really interesting because I noticed that both of us didn't use white as a base at all for any of our looks. Yeah, see, I don't really like white as a base. It's a great mixing medium. Well, because I think a lot of people see this as a bright palette and they go, okay, in order to get the most vibrancy, you really need a white base. But I'm seeing like when you put it on the eye, you can build it up to get it really opaque yeah. anyway. The pigmentation in these shadows, yeah, you don't need a white to help. Just... What brushes do you use mostly? So my favorite brushes are Hakuhodo. Um, so good. So but why aren't they available here? Oh, I know. They're Beauty so Beautylish, can you please 
please stock Hakuhodo on Beautylish. Unless like we USA Hakuhodo. Hakuhodo. <laughs> maybe Hakuhodo USA have a... Exclusivity, you know, yeah. maybe. I have a Nude by Nature brush kit that I got. It was my yeah. first ever brush kit. Yeah. I still use my e.l.f. brush kit that I got when, when I first good, started. When it's good, it's good. So I just wanted to bring a bit more of that warmth. Again, I'm blending this quite far out into my temple because yeah. I want to bring that length. I like that your eyeshadow isn't necessarily confined to the eyelid. Um, I'm keeping my shadows quite high here. It's not really a draping look. This isn't so much about the cheeks. You know, this is very much an eye yeah. look. Yeah. Also, Lena didn't, so I didn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take my cues from her. She's got some great looks. Oh, it's amazing. Hi, I'm Lena, if you're else. watching. Hi. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. she is. <laughs> Um, yeah, here was the um, purple. And while this, this palette doesn't have like a dark purple, I really yeah. like to mix the darker purple with the blue, which in yeah. combination makes quite a rich blackened purple, yeah. um, which works really effectively as yeah. a liner. Because it is a brights palette, it doesn't have your classic deepening shades. That dark blue really, really need... does yeah. function as that if yeah. you use it mixed. Because you can all mix these colors. I mean, they've got the primary colors in there. Here I am again with the big fluffy yeah. cheek brush, um, which just kind of effortlessly diffuses yeah. the edges. Yeah, so I finished this look off with just a bit of coal liner yeah. on my upper lash line for yeah. some definition, as well as a generous coat of mascara. And that's it. And it looks really good. Thank I you. I want to try this out. Yeah, you absolutely should. So moving on to my first one. This is kind of like, you know, eyebrows on the eyelid kind of look. So I wanted to do a graphic liner again. I did another one in my previous video where I did use it with the Linda Horberg Enchanted Seekers palette and that kind of turned out a little bit crazy. So I wanted to redo it. And this time I've used the shadows dry with an angled brush. And I find that using it that way, you get so much more control. And I'm much happier with this look than I was with my previous one. I think it's just better. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no, improving. I, I think with yeah. your eye shape especially, you have quite an upturned lid yeah. shape. I think it really suits it. Um, oh, you can see that pigmentation yeah, right off the bat. Yeah, so good. Yeah, again, I didn't use any white base. I just added straight it straight in. in. And I've used And that sea foam color is just yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Matches my hair at this point because ah! it's lightened so much. <laughs> I've oh, kind of that done just a looks like bit a of gel a, liner. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I often do mix things with Inglot Duraline, but then, you know, when you can get the pigmentation off the bat, mm. there's no real need. No and this reason. palette, you don't need to do that. So that saves an extra step. Yeah. Um, and it makes things a lot easier because when you do mix things with Duraline, you do have to work pretty quickly because it does get dry. Yeah. Rosses, I love you can this technique take time. that you've done here um, where you've added the blues. And even though maybe on your eyelid it doesn't look like it's uh, yeah. different colors, it just adds some kind of like eye tricking dimension yeah, to the look. Yeah, exactly. So beautiful. I've just kind of created a gradient with this look mm. and then I've used my, I've got new brushes. Oh yeah? <laughs> my Sonia G brushes. Ooh, so I've good. seen them popping around on YouTube. They're really good. And also because my lash line is pretty sensitive, so I think this kind of natural hair brush helps a bit with right, the irritation. Right, no scratchy fibers. So I've just pretty much kept with the same color family on the upper lash line and bottom lash line. Mm. What and brush are you using here? I'm using the Anastasia Josie Beverly Hills brush three. It's mm. a very good brush for precise line work. Yeah, because it's They're got hard a to find. My favorite brush for precise line and looks, which I yeah. use in a couple of my looks, is the Hakuhodo. Oh my god, I should know the number. Why don't they put the numbers on? Oh, the I it's know, like, it's so frustrating. Um, but brushes. yeah, Hakuhodo has a really great selection of precise liner brushes. They do. Oh, you just nailed that in like one go. <laughs> I try not to edit it down too much so you can see all the steps that I'm doing because otherwise I find tutorials can be a bit... Yeah, useless. Yeah. It's not really a so, tutorial at that point, yeah. You know, um, so it does take time. I think it, in terms of, you know, doing this kind of work, you just need to be patient. And obviously there's a Q-tip if you yeah. <laughs> stuff things up, which obviously, you know, which things I get messy. Using a naked lid um, in combination with this line yeah. gives you a bit more flexibility. To finish this off, I've added some falsies, but they're very natural. They look amazing. They're Princess Lee falsies. They're handmade in Taiwan. They're very natural, especially yeah. for Asian eyes. Wonderful. See? Yeah, no, I love that look. I don't often do kind of graphic liner looks, so it's really interesting to see your interpretation of the use of this yeah. palette. It's one of my goals this year to kind of nail down graphic liner in, in my goal video. I, I think, think I might said, be there. I think I said, yeah. <laughs> I, I think shadow is a really great way to start learning techniques like I that. I agree, because with a pen or a pencil, you so gotta have, forgiving. yeah, need more control. Yeah, and then to start off with shadow, you can build pigmentation, you can figure out where things need to go. And exactly. I think we spend a lot more time with eyeshadow brushes in our hands than we do with like pens or pencils in our, exactly. in, in our hands in yeah. regard to you know use on our face. Yeah. So it's a really great first step, I think. Yeah, I agree. People. This look kind of reminds me of like a nebula. 
Oh yeah, I wore this out and about, which I most of the time yeah. I do with my dramatic yeah. looks, but this one in particular, a couple of times I caught myself in the mirror and I was like, girl, you got punched! <laughs> <laughs> I did it, it's just eyeshadow, I promise. So I wanted to do this one because I love the combination of the blue and the purple and the white in yeah. this palette. I just think it is the most dreamy, soft kind of look. It's yeah. my favorite shade. And it looks very Shire pastel face. here because you have yeah. mixed with the so white. Much white. You just don't think about doing that. Yeah. But I saw someone mix the white with the shadow and I was like, perfect, amazing, I love it. So I wanted to start off with this mixture of blues and purples in the halo eye shape. Yeah. Um, before I started adding some definition just by mixing the ratios differently. Yeah. So this palette has quite a warm purple and quite a cool purple. You can use those to add different effects yeah. to it. So yeah. here I was bringing some warmth back into the look by using more of that pinky purple. I like to use this kind of large flat brush that does a good job of laying down big swaths of color. So here I was adding some of the brightness that is yeah. typical of the halo eye with white with a tiny little tap of blue mixed Mixed in. I'm using the dark blue and the dark yeah. purple together to cr create a lot of definition. That's really nice because it doesn't look like you've used blue at all. But again, that's one of the hidden shades. Yeah. Where you wouldn't necessarily think that that's a color that can be produced from this palette, mm. but you can actually create something really unique and yeah. different from what the palette. Looks, looks like, like it. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is a pastel purple halo eye, yeah. uh, which is not something you'd look at the palette and think, oh, great pastels. Yeah. Um, but you can absolutely make it. And this look was really about showcasing just how well the shadows can be blended to yeah. create completely unique colors. Yeah, so I finished off this look with just a quick little tiny baby cat eye, like the yeah. thinnest liquid line you can possibly imagine, yeah. um, and a thick coat of mascara, and yeah. that was good to go. I have a little bit of inner corner highlight on here. It's from the Kat Von D Alchemist palette from Kitchen It's really highly recommended. Oh, yeah. And hey Kat if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the close-ups you can really see like uh, how seamlessly the shades yeah. blend into my skin. Um, exactly. You know I am uh, probably one of my pet peeves about um, what YouTube has taught people about makeup is that you always need a brown transition shade and you absolutely do not. Exactly it's so yeah. true and on top of that you don't need a very fair light shade for your transition. You absolutely can not. use you know, it's the pigmented shade with the lightest hand or mm. blend it out so much that it becomes a transition, which is what yeah. you've done. Yeah. It stops shades from getting muddied together. I think, you know, so yeah. many people, when they attempt to use colorful shades and maybe they haven't done a lot of work with them before, mm. they think that brown is somehow this like absolute makeup staple that needs to be part of your life. Yeah. But you do not need it. You just need to blend. And, you know, the one of the good things about the Busy Art formula yeah. is that it is so blendable and exactly. you can create transition shades out of vibrant purples. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh, Here's my I one. love this look. Yeah. I'm really kind of into monotone looks like looks in the same color, color family. family. Yeah. yeah. I think this palette really lends itself to that as well. Like it encourages you to explore a color family in a really yeah. full way. So I'm using this shade all over my lid. Again, one of my favorite shades in this palette. And this one on my lid by itself does pull very pink, like a mm. raspberry pink, which I like. Um, it's beautiful. I added some orange. This one's actually quite neon, surprisingly. Yeah, it looks like neon peach. I feel like this is quite a unique shade to my collection. Yeah. I've got lots of orange eyeshadows, but I don't have one quite like this. I think it has no brown and no yellow, yeah. which is really unusual yeah. for an orange. Exactly. And then this is the first time I used the white. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, the reason why I wanted to use the white was because I wanted to mix it with the orange to create a lighter orange. Because I don't actually do what you do. Like, I don't dip in the orange into the white. I don't mm. know. I feel like I might dirty my white. Yeah. But I probably actually, shouldn't be so precious. I, sh I should have brought my palette with me because my white is pristine. Yeah, maybe so. it should be less precious and just yeah. do it. I don't often bounce between bounce, the two. Yeah. Yeah. But this demonstrates yeah. really clearly that you can blend the colors just as well on the, on the lid. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's really up to your preference. So this has gone kind of lighter. It's sort of like a halo eye as well. Mm, but made with colors yeah. rather than like shades. Pretty much I didn't plan any of my looks. I kind of yeah, just went with never it. Mine. <laughs> so I, was just like, I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah. I really like this shade as an inner corner pop of color. It's beautiful. I'm really kind of into oranges and different shades that you wouldn't expect on the inner corner. Mm. It just adds some interest. But that pink is just beautiful. Yeah, and I've kind of added it up towards my brow bone as well because I've. I don't know, it's quite flattering in some the, ways. The into the brow bone? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. It kind of emphasizes 
the colour a little bit more. Yeah, and I think it makes the look look more intentional. That space is a bit too... Yeah, underutilized. It's missing something. Yeah, yeah it's totally yeah. an underutilised area. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I've added some yellow. I really like how you fix yeah. the yellow with the, um, the pink bit. because it brings it back to the orange that you've got on yeah, the centre of the Yeah, it becomes like a mango kind of oh. like orangey yellow Yes, shade. it looks like a cocktail. Like a pina colada. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, mm -mm. lower lash line as well. Using my favourite lower lash line brush. Beautiful. And then some pink. I like matchy matchy where I like match the upper eyelid with the lower. Yeah, not necessarily area. in the same placement, but yeah. in the same shades. Exactly. I think it looks really beautiful. I just added pops of yellow where I felt like I wanted yeah. to. I love how you've used a lot of individual colours in this look, but blended together, they almost look like they come from each other. They don't get lost and muddied. The shades all work really yeah, nicely together. Yeah, this is a great demonstration of how you can blend quite yeah. uh, different colours together and still get a really harmonious look. And then on the cheeks, I've kind of started from the outer V and taken it towards the apples of my cheeks. Yeah, I like yeah. the way that you've done your eyelashes for this look um, and how there's not a lot of emphasis on your brow or your lashes. Yeah. And you really like let the colors speak for themselves. I really yeah. like how it's turned out. It's, it's different to what I usually mm. do, so. So this one, Good oh, I love this once. green. This oh so man, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful green. And with the red lips. So, for this look, I mainly used the Seafoam green. And this is kind of a similar colour palette that you played with with the graphic liner look mm. that we talked about earlier. Where it looks like a single shade from the palette, yeah. but it's really just playing in the same colour family and giving it a secret, secret dimension. It's not obvious that dimension has been created until yeah. you watch the process. It's not like, this is where I place the green, this is where I place yeah, the blue. Here's the I, you know. Yeah, here's the dark shade, yeah, here's the dark shade, here's the light shade. Yeah, so I started off with uh, just the seafoam yeah. shade, um, which you can see in comparison to the eye that I've already finished. Even though the finished eye looks similar to the color in the pan, this yeah. is quite a lot brighter. So I would just place this all over the lid, went for a really opaque, payoff. So this was just taking more of that same shade and mm. blending it out into the crease. I wanted this to be very diffused. Do you usually do one eyelid first and then the other? Not when I'm doing my makeup normally. Because I feel like that's really brave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, not when I'm doing my makeup just to do my makeup. Um, mm. But when I film, I like to completely finish an eye. Yeah. Um, so that, um, because it. most of my videos are just one minute long, it's good to be able to see what it's going to look like in yeah. the end because yeah. you get yeah. no time to do it. I should start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh my God. It was a real challenge when I was doing uh, my looks for this video because I just I wanted to do all monochrome looks. <laughs> I wanted yeah, to use this yeah. technique over and over again. I just love this like rich, intense, punchy colour by the lash yeah. line yeah. diffused in the same colour family out yeah. into, you know, the the outer regions of the eye. That's really yeah. not the word for it. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, no, we'll do interesting things. <laughs> yeah, so this is, I really just focused on getting this as diffused as possible. Again, mm. there's no transition shades here, none of that, no browns, um, no skin tone shades. It's just using the formula to push itself to, yeah. to that kind of really diffused, beautiful yeah. look. I mean, um, who needs a skin tone shade when you just cover it up anyway? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Thanks. I finished off this look with a thin black line just along my lash line so that I could apply falsies. I had a pretty thick coat of mascara because I'm only wearing half lashes. These are the Bokeh Beauty uh, from And That's Jacob. Yeah, Melvin, that's beautiful. Melvin Vlogger. Yeah, um, really nice. His lashes are quite large for someone with small eyes. So I just cut them in half and wore them as half lashes, which oh, gives yeah. this really um, kind of fluttery boudoir I like that. kind of look. Oh, I forgot to talk about the gloss. Yeah, I, I thought I was finished. Um, and then I was like, this is boring, Matt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want this to be exciting. So I just got some clear gloss. You really want to be very light handed if you don't want to disturb the color underneath for those yeah. initial photos of five minutes that the gloss will last before it creases. <laughs> yeah, I've so it's just too. like a tiny little tap and I, I thought it gave a really beautiful yeah, uh, nice kind shade. of wet definition. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Here's my next one, Ooh, and this was, this was very much a mishmash of looks because I've been into multiple colors on the eyelid but in a more confined space. Mm. So I kind of randomly placed these eyeshadows and I feel like it's quite muted except for that neon orange that just makes it a bit more fun. And I think the brown lip really mm. grounds those 
earthier tones that you've yeah, got on the outer yeah. corner. So I've started with the blue. Ooh, ooh. This is an instance where my brush is too small and it's taking me forever. <laughs> and I should have really used a bigger brush. Yeah, get those face um, brushes out. Sometimes I find that it's just easier to take a little bit more time and just work with it a bit slower than mm. like trying to take it off if you've gone up too far. And then I've used Holy a wing <laughs> brush on the inner corner. That almost looks wet. That's why this is one of my favorite shades. Really mm. love it. And um, just use that in the inner portion. And then the yellow. I've used that next to the blue and the orange and it does turn into a green. Because yellow and blue make green. So you can sort of see that once you kind of blend all the colors together. Yeah, and this absolutely is like a primary change. color palette. Exactly. You are going to get those interactions happening yeah. in quite a clear way. And then I've used the green in the crease, but again, mm. I haven't taken it out too high. When you mix it in, it kind of turns into a mustard green, mm. which I really like. So it is quite a chartreuse green in the pan. Yeah. So it's got yeah. a lot of those yellow tones. Yeah, so, and then I've that added orange. it more into the inner corner. I wasn't sure if I really liked this look for a while, but I think now that I'm seeing it again, it's growing on me. I think it's a really uh, bold set of color choices and they're blended together in a way that you don't often see. Yeah. So it's um, kind of shocking to the eye to look at at yeah. first, but I think it's really um, beautifully placed. Thank you. The way we do our eyeshadows is so different. Yeah, it's completely so different. different. Yeah, to completely different preferences, but they're both very beautiful. And I, I love that punch of orange. So yeah, I kept the lashes really simple, just my own. My preference is to keep the skin quite dewy looking, quite Especially radiant. when you're working with a look like this, you want the focus to be on the skin. Wow, those lashes! Oh yeah, these are another bouquet beauty. Wow. These are the Naomi style. They are a lot. Jacob markets these as one of his uh, more natural styles. I think it's hilarious what people think is like natural. He can carry off quite a large lash. It looks amazing on him. So I started off this with a really like pastel sky blue, mostly white, tiny kick of blue. I think it's like a seven to one ratio of yeah. white to blue. I'm gonna try that now. Yeah, well, and for such a pastel color, it really does go on. You would here. never think that this pastel blue is from this palette. Yeah, and like, I'm not wearing a white base there. There is no NYX Milk pencil under under yeah. that color. It's great, because I'm learning so much from you. Even with quite a, a, a weak color as a sky blue, the intensity for this palette really does allow you to build it up to yeah. complete opacity, yeah. even without a white base. And again, I'm kind of using that same technique I used in the previous yeah. look, where I just pack on the lid, and blend it out with the same color. Feels very vintage, like Tippi yeah, Hendren powder blue. Type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is definitely a very 60s color. Um, again, apologies. I sometimes get a little carried away with my blending. It's like a full body sport for me and then yeah. I find myself out of frame. Um, again, this is like a really obvious <clears throat> case of what you were saying about how I do not uh, color within the lines of yeah. my eyelid. <laughs> I needed it for those lashes later. <laughs> exactly. The lash is gonna cover up quite a large portion of the eye. Mm. Potentially why I do that is because I got my start in makeup in drag makeup. I hated makeup. Yeah, I was going through school. your Instagram and I was like, wow, you've done so many like drag looks. Yeah. It's a funny place to start. <laughs> it, is, it is a funny place to start. But I saw like a Miss Fame video yeah, in like 2012 yeah. and I was like, Oh my god, this is beautiful. The transformation is just amazing. Yeah. I was just completely taken with it. And then I would like hide in my bedroom and practice drag looks with <laughs> like hilarious. my grandma's I makeup. Think that's great. <laughs> so I think a lot of those techniques have still carried on into yeah. my, um, you know, I definitely do mostly beauty makeup yeah, now. Yeah. But, you know, you still get those, you know, makeup goes in your brows, obviously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you watch so much YouTube and you kind of get into seeing people do things. A certain way. Yeah, a certain way that you mm. don't think about. There's other ways to create colors. Yeah, and put colors together. You don't have to have a, an, an eyeshadow pan in every color that you want. You can make the colors that you want. It's kind of a really classic uh, placement in mm. that it's the darker color on the outer V and a bit yeah. into the crease, but it's just in colors that maybe we don't see as often. So this is really like a three color look. It's the light blue, it's the white, and it's the red. And yeah. you know, it's just mixed in different intensities to yeah. create the nuances exactly. in between. I think this is, yeah, one of my favorite looks that you've done. Oh, really thank nice. you. So oh, this is the one I do. It's a very primary it. color. Oh, like, the lip. This is the complete opposite of what you did. Yeah. <laughs> again, I kind of wanted to play with like a more graphic line where the liner was more purposefully done, but again, didn't want to use like a white base because I wanted to sheer it out a bit more. I think imperfections in colorful makeup give this really like editorial kind of effect. If you yeah. can see freckles, moles, lines, it's less high glamour and yeah, exactly. more just Every day. Just throw on some color. So I don't blend as long as you do, but I, I do. 
<laughs> I do do some blending. Pretty much that's it. And then I've added the blue on the lower lash line. I've kind of made the line a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. Usually I shear it out, but I'm patting it in a bit more because I want to keep that color really bold. Mm -hmm. And then I do wing it out slightly. So not that much, but just a little bit. I love how bit. tight you've gone to your lower lash line. And it's kind of gone to my waterline too. Yeah, well. It's not intentional, but it, it happens. Yeah, I just kind of flicked it out the tiniest bit. And then I wanted to also bring it out. Because usually I follow my lash line completely, mm. but I kind of went a bit further away from it. Oh, this, uh, I love so, the cat-like effect it gives. I think it's quite a simple look. But that's the, a good thing. Because mm. this palette... Often you look at it and you're like, oh my god, I'm going to have to sit down forever and figure out the most complicated and spend 20 minutes blending and yeah. all of that. But you really don't. This can be really impactful. Exactly. This so really this cool. is pretty much all primary colors. Uh -huh. Yellow, blue, and like an orangey yeah. red. This is Ziggy from Colourpop. It's almost like you've taken what would be your cat eyeliner on top and you've put it on the bottom and made it blue. It's probably one of my favorite ones. And I, I do like how you've kept the yellow quite sheer here. It doesn't look like a bold, bright yeah. pop of color. And you don't always need the color color is looking like in the pan to look like what it is oh, on your yeah. eyelids. Not everything has to be full coverage, full pigment all the time. I agree. This is oh. your one. I love this look. This is one of my favorites. This is one of my like most liked photos. This is just one color, just the red. It's kind of a take on draping. I don't always like to do draping that comes up under my cheekbones. I like to concentrate the color on my outer corner. Um, and this is a really literal interpretation of yeah, that. Yeah, I noticed that you do keep the color quite high on your yeah. cheekbones. Yeah, I have quite a long face, which I hide with my fringe. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of my techniques are about adding width and I think putting color on my temples. I think what's great about that is you understand your face, so you understand where colors work. So yeah, it's a really simple look. It's mainly just, it's just the red shade uh, with a blush brush and a yeah, fluffy brush. It's really beautiful. And I paired it with a bright lid. It's beautiful. Um, I've had quite a few people recreate this look. Absolutely encourage you to give it a go. It takes like two minutes to do. I wouldn't try it. Do it. I dare you. It's funny that you, you've only used one shade for this look because mm. that's what I did for my last look. Again, with color, I think, and with this palette, you kind of want to go everywhere. If you, want to, if you want something really simple and really paired back, this one is the most wearable because it's one shade and basically I've taken this pink and sheared it out a lot. So mm. it looks really, really baby pink and not like a crazy pop of pink if you're not into that, which mm. I hardly ever wear pink. I yeah. really See, don't. See, that pink is really intimidating yeah. to me. Probably it, it the most is. intimidating yeah. shade in the palette. Yeah. This is one tap mm. and I'm just working it in, blending it out. Mm. And just you can working see it really that you're in. pushing it into your, the skin yeah, of your eyes. Just eyelid. buffing it like, in. Exactly. And that's one tap. And that's all you need. Pressing bar. So, yeah, and it takes it from that really like neon Barbie pink to yeah. what is almost a believable skin tone shade. So I mean this could be like a transition shade. You don't need like pinks. So that's what I've done and then I've also added that to my lower lash line as well. Really blending it out on the lower lash line keeping it pretty close but also smoking out the tiniest bit and yeah I know I've actually lost some footage but suddenly I've got liner. <laughs> I oh, accidentally no. deleted it. I'm so annoyed. But basically I took this same shade, I've just used that dry with an angled brush and just stamped it in, keeping it really close to my lash line. I feel like I don't have a strong lash line because my lashes mm. are non-existent. It just adds a bit more dimension. Mm. Keeping this really simple, I didn't want to mm. add falsies. Yeah. I've just added some mascara and I think that just makes the pink pop out more. You don't more. want to cover that. So I've used that same shade on mm -hmm. the cheeks. But this fan brush is actually not the right brush to use. I just wanted to try this new brush out. Probably just use a blush brush. I just sheet it out and again, you can really use this as a blush. It doesn't have to be an eyeshadow if mm -hmm. you're not into pink. And I think it looks really pretty and feminine. Really soft. And then I've used again a soft pink. Pride and Prejudice meets like K-pop. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Like I know 10 looks feels like a lot for one palette, but honestly, 10 looks is just the beginning. It's a drop in the... Yeah, drop in the bucket of bucket, yeah. good old editorial yeah, brands. Like, I've seen so many of the ones you've done on Instagram. Yeah, it's oh just god. Like the dozens. possibilities are endless. Congratulations if you made it to the end. I'm sure yeah. this is a really long video. Um, yeah. But, you know, an hour, we're both... Oh my gosh, an hour. Oh god. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed watching all this. I think it's been a really fun challenge. And, yeah. And we've done such different looks. Yeah, completely different. Because we, we have different eye shapes, we use different techniques, we've used different colors. Mm. If you've got this palette, if you've got a palette like this. Yeah, or just any like colorful singles that you have lying around or even blushes, like a lot of the tones in this palette are quite similar to blushes people exactly. might have. You know, hopefully this has given you some, emboldened you to use color some more because yeah. You know, there's so many options. If this is what you can do with only the shades in the palette, imagine what you can do with metallics, with glitters, with yeah. more liner, with 
you know, all of these different techniques. So it's it's just, it's a gift that keeps on giving. And please, please, please tag us in any of the photos that you have used this palette in or any of the looks that you recreate. We'd absolutely love to see them. And if you want us to do another one with the Dark Max palette, let us know. I'll be getting it soon. Because <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that. I think that's another great palette to use as well. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.